It's security through obscurity. Welcome back to Factor Fictional, the show where we look at cool tech and science from your favorite movies, video games, books, and comics, and ask, is this really possible? And if not, why not? Hey, did you love Skyfall? I totally did, but some of the hacking scenes made me cringe just a little bit. Fortunately, I have Darren Kitchen, hacker extraordinaire on the show today, to teach Q a few lessons. ...international policy on matters of internet governance. So Darren, obviously Skyfall is a Bond movie, which means that things are going to be a little bit over the top, but one of the things I was really curious about is, is, was it possible for Silva to actually trigger that gas main explosion that took out MI6? Uh, spoiler alert, by the way. Well, given the right circumstances, I could actually see something like that possibly happening, given that there have been a lot of discoveries in vulnerabilities in what are known as SCADA systems. And these are basically big industrial control systems. If you remember the Stuxnet worm, that was the one that uh, targeted Iranian centrifuges and would you know, basically get them to destroy themselves. Ooh. So it is possible in theory. A lot of the vulnerabilities that are found in these SCADA systems are pretty much because there are inherent weaknesses. They're all based on really old protocols like Telnet, those systems that run our electric grid and boilers and gas pipes and things, they're put in place with an expectation of a 20 year lifespan. So think about computer security 20 years ago and then think about hacking today. Now as a security expert, when you saw Silva hacking into M's computer, for example, and sending her all those crazy messages, did you look at that and say like, oh, that's child's play or, or is that something that wouldn't have been possible given the kind of network she was probably on? I, you know, I can't speculate onto what kind of mysterious network MI6, fictional or non-fictional, may have. Uh, I could speculate that, you know, if, if uh, M were like hit with spear phishing or a remote exploit, it's totally possible to do kind of the similar uh, idea of that. Of course, Hollywood always succeeds it up. You'll never see a real operating system in, in, a, in a movie like this, and when, when you do, they inherently get it wrong. So what is something that you saw that made you kind of say, like, really, guys? Like, you couldn't have tried a little bit harder with this? A lot of the jargon was bogus. There was a, a line in there about an asymmetric cipher that bounces across satellites, and it's uh, that's like me saying, I'm using a banana to drill <laughs> my toaster pickles. Like, what? Mmm, toaster pickles. <laughs> So what about some of the stuff that Q was doing? Because they have this great scene where Q is manipulating all this stuff that shows the map of the subway system, and it's all like, I don't know, I, I can't even really remember exactly what he was doing, but it looked really cool. <laughs> was that, is that possible? Is that something that could have happened in real life? So again, what they're trying to show here, in, and of course Hollywood sexies it up with all of the graphics and whatnot, but what they were illustrating is basically the uh, tasks of doing forensics work. And real hacking, real forensics work, it's quite boring. So they did a good job of sexing it up there. So based on your knowledge of the stuff that you saw in the film, would you give Skyfall a factor fictional in terms of, of the hacking? Well, some of the things that Silva said uh, while J Bond was on the island with him, uh, he just rattled off real quick like, ah, oh, I can do anything with computers. What was it uh, manipulate stocks? Uh, totally possible. In uh, 2010, the SEC looked into uh, a Russian hacker from St. Petersburg that was hacking into uh, Scott's trade accounts to do like basically a hack, pump, and dump kind of scenario there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was able to defraud like $600,000 or something out of people, made himself almost a quarter million dollars in like 15 minutes. All right, so that's possible. That's Check definitely that possible. Um, interfering with satellites, uh, that's totally possible. In fact, the there's a get the name of it, but it's like the US China Commerce Department. It's some government agency that has an annual report and their 2011 annual report uh, documents these several instances that these different Landsat satellites and these different satellites that the US government uses uh, were basically jammed for a couple of minutes each time. They speculate it's China. They didn't say it was China. They, they just said, you know, it's similar to the kind of techniques that China would use. So that's possible. Mm -hmm. And then I think the third one was the ability to rig an election. There's been a lot of cool research in that, and most recently it was uh, published in Popular Science. A security researcher demonstrated how with like $10 in Radio Shack parts and physical access to, and maybe like 30 to 90 seconds physical access to, a Diebold AccuVote machine, they were able to put in basically a man in the middle chip, which would allow them to either allow your vote to go through or not allow your vote to go through based on who you're voting for. Oh good. Yeah. That's great. It sounds like you're saying it's 
fact, that most of this is factual. Okay, so I'm saying that a lot of stuff that they showed off was Hollywood's equivalent of hacking, mm -hmm. which they always have to speed up and sexy up because trust me, it's like, you know, let's watch Q sit there for a week noodling at something. It's not that <laughs> exciting. Some of the uh, things that, uh, that Silva just rattled off are totally plausible. What really resonated with me was what so sadly the Bond girl that they had to kill, spoiler alert, she said, it's amazing how much panic one can cause with a single computer. And I think that's what resonated with me because it's true. I mean, if you don't understand computers, you could totally fear them. People fear the unknown. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Can you tell us what you're working on over at uh, ThreatWire? Oh, uh, we are just protecting internet freedom and your privacy and security. So, you know, all sorts of fun stuff there. You head over to uh, the place to watch the thing. <laughs> the place to watch the thing right here on TechFeed. <laughs> thank you so much, Darren. I'm glad you're looking out for all of our safety. And you want your face on Factor Fictional? Let me know your favorite tech from your favorite Bond film. Also, let me know what tech and signs you want to see right here on the show. If it's tricky enough, you might see yourself on a future episode. Until next week, I'm Veronica Belmont, and this is Factor Fictional on Tech Feed. Make sure to subscribe to see all of our new shows, like Threatwire with Darren and Shannon. I'll see you next time. It's very real. Uh, it's not in its final stages. It's not actually implemented in, in any type of military applications right now. There's still in uh, prototype phases again they, they started i believe in 2005 with the first first prototype and just now getting into phase two uh i believe as of last month it's, it's really in the early stages right now i think they're just trying to lock down being able to launch it